Anybody that tells you one container of frosting for one cake, they're totally full of it. There's no way that's the right ratio. I'm a food stylist. Consider me a makeup artist for food. I take boring, everyday, average food and make it look amazing. I'm gonna show you how I style a classic birthday cake and get that perfect slice out. Desserts, especially cakes, are one of the most recognized foods to style. They're elegant and beautiful, they make a statement, and everybody loves cake. The first thing when making a beautiful photo-ready cake is to have perfectly even layers. So I have a bread knife and my cake layer, and I'm just gonna start trimming. Also, these cake layers were baked off yesterday, and once they were completely cooled after baking, they were stored in the refrigerator overnight. That really helps with trimming your cake, and also when it's time to ice it if your cake layers are cool. Looks good. We're making a three layer cake today, so I'm gonna trim my next two layers, and we'll move on to the next step. I have two pedestals. This is my prop pedestal that's gonna go on our photo set. And then this is a rotating pedestal that is gonna help me ice the cake. So I'm just gonna double stack this guy. Ooh. It's no secret that food stylists use prepackaged food sometimes. And in this instance, today I'm going to use an already made store-bought frosting. It is a temperature controlled shelf stable product. So I don't have to worry about it melting or getting too cold. I'm gonna put just a small bit of the frosting onto the cake pedestal. This is going to hold my cake in place for me. I'm just going to make sure it's off center. So that way when I go to take my slice out of the cake, you won't see that chocolate frosting on the cake pedestal. For the bottom layer, I'm gonna put my baked side on the bottom. I have an ice cream scoop, which is going to help me make sure that each layer that I fill has an equal amount of frosting. I'm just gonna plurp that right down there. See how awesome it is that I've, I'm doing this cake on this spinning pedestal? And I can really just hold my spatula in one place and then spin my pedestal. This one, I'm going to put the trimmed side down on top of the cake. I have to say that yellow, a yellow cake with chocolate buttercream is my all-time favorite cake. Comment below and uh, let me know what your favorite cake is or what your birthday cake of choice is. Holy tall cake, Batman. I'm gonna add a little, like one scoop of frosting to the top and then we're gonna work on our crumb coat, which is gonna just be a light coat of the frosting on the outside of the cake. Putting a crumb coat on a cake really allows you to have that barrier between your raw cake layers that can flake off any moment into your frosting. It also allows me to make sure that my cake layers are evenly stacked. If they're not, you will definitely be able to tell with the placement of your frosting. We're gonna let this cake chill in the refrigerator for about 15 or 20 minutes, just so this creme coat set. So we're just gonna take this away. While our cake is chilling in the refrigerator, we are gonna take a brief moment to talk about sprinkles. When I think birthday cake, I definitely think good old fashioned party mix, sprinkles, multicolor, fun, woo, woo, woo. But there's nothing wrong with getting super creative and making your own sprinkle mix, which is what I would like to do for this birthday cake. So I'm gonna take these little pearls that are all these beautiful multicolors. We're gonna do a heavy base of those because these are kind of my favorite. So it's got these sanding sugars in there too, which gives it a little bit of a sparkle. This sprinkle is called a Jimmy, J-I-M-M. -M. Is it an I-E? I. I don't know, Jimmy, look him up. And then the little flake is that's called confetti. Who knew that sprinkles had different names? Well, now you do. You can just add as much as you want or as little as you want. I'm gonna add all the pink. Boop, boom, done. Okay, we have our beautiful homemade sprinkle mix. Magic explosion, that's the name. Done, Rashawn's magical explosion sprinkle mix. All right, our cake has chilled, the crumb coat is set. I just wanna quickly talk to you about a couple of tools that I have. 
um, which I probably am not gonna use today, but they're really fun and super easy to use when decorating a cake. So I have some plastic spatulas. This one in particular, if you hold it like this, it creates that straight side. If you want to smooth your edges of your cake, so you would basically like turn it and hold it and you would smooth your cake that way. This uh, plastic spatula creates striations on your cake. So you have a finer side over here and then a thicker side over here. This ha spatula has four different sides. You have a straight side here. It has this ridge side here, this, and then another one here. I think today we're gonna do a little bit of a, a natural homemade look to this cake. I'm gonna add parchment paper sheets around the outside of the cake on the pedestal. This is just gonna help in case I make a wicked mess. Now I'm taking the frosting and I'm going to the base of the cake. While I'm turning the cake pedestal, I'm also bringing the spatula in a semi-circle motion back towards me, which just helps get that frosting really even. This is like either A, super boring for you, or B, super relaxing for you. Comment and let us know which you prefer. She's not perfect. She's not a wedding cake by any means, but I think it looks really nice. It reminds me of a homemade birthday cake, and that's exactly what we're going for. I'm gonna show you one more cool little trick to do with your frosting. Right now, it's definitely glossy, but it is not super shiny. So I have a torch here that I use all the time in my food styling. And basically what we're gonna do is heat up one of my offset spatulas and take it around the side of the cake like I've done before. And it makes a pretty awesome transformation. Every time you go to do this, you wanna make sure that your spatula is clean because every time you heat it up, obviously it will cook the frosting onto your spatula, which is not very fun. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my parchment paper and also just sort of go back over with my paintbrush. I'm gonna add sprinkles on top. I'm trying not to make a total mess, but you know what? Sometimes that's just life. We've got our sprinkles. So now I'm gonna show you guys how I get my perfect slice of cake. The first thing is you just wanna make sure that you have a really sharp knife and obviously it needs to be long enough to cut through the entire cake. And secondly, you wanna have on hand either a cloth or a paper towel to clean your knife off with. And it probably wouldn't hurt to have something damp around too just in case you can't get the knife completely clean. All right, moment of truth, people. Just gonna wiggle it, wiggle, 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 wiggle. All right, I'm going over to the plates. Sprinkle madness! Ooh, look how pretty, it's so even. Those layers are gorgeous, hello. Okay, I am gonna show you guys how I clean up a cake slice, which is exactly the way that we're gonna clean up the inside of the cake too. So we're going back over and we're picking up that chocolate that was dragged through the cake layer by the knife. That's sort of an inevitable thing that happens. It's inevitable. And if you have any crumbs that got into your icing layer, you can pick those up too. It's not completely perfect. You can definitely still see a little bit, but it definitely looks a lot better than when I first sliced it. Obviously we can kind of do a, a before and after with my second slice. And if you have any marks that look weird, you can just go back over with your paintbrush to smooth that out. If you can see, here and here. There's these pull marks from the knife. So you can just take your paintbrush and just sort of smooth that out. If either on the inside of the cake or on a cake slice happens to have a hole. I just stuffed that hole with a piece of the yellow cake. I'm gonna spend just a little bit more time getting super perfectionist on this, these cake slices and this cake. And then I'm gonna show you our really fun birthday party photo setup that we've got going on. All right, you guys, this setup looks great. We have a total party scene going on back here. Birthday party, not the other kind of party. But it looks really fun and festive. I'm gonna let our photographer get a couple beauty shots of this after I light those candles. And then we're gonna let the rest of our crew eat this delicious chocolate cake because I know they've been waiting on it all day. Oh my gosh, you guys, the, fl the flames are colored. 
Stop it. I'm not even like, I can't deal. This has been great. Happy unbirthday to me. Make sure you go on YouTube and follow Well Done. Like, comment, subscribe, and tell me what you want to see me food style next time. A uh, very happy unbirthday to me. To you? A uh, very happy unbirthday to me. To you.